Yo. Yo. Doom score hot shot. All right. So the big story is out of a small town in Kansas, about an hour south of Wichita, I think is where they said it was. It involves a newspaper uh, being raided by the police. Now, I will just tell you that when the articles about this story say it's a complicated story, that doesn't bode well for me or this segment because we don't want to sit here and get too in the weeds. But the very, very, very condensed version of this, <clears throat> and we don't know all the details yet, so we'll, we're supposedly going to find out, the police say we're going to find out. But you've got this local newspaper uh, in a small town in Kansas that was raided by the police, Okay. One of the owners, this woman who was in her 90s, like 98 years old, she dies a day after. She collapsed and, and died, according to her son, a day after the raids had happened. Her son was out of town when he got the call. He says that all this stress is what led to her demise. I mean, she was 98 years old, but I'm sure this uh, didn't help. Now, there's supposed to be protections for the press in the United States and for journalists. You know, you, you don't have to give up your sources and... If the police want to get a search warrant for your home or your offices or whatever, generally speaking, if it involves your job as a journalist or your journalism outlet, they would need to get a subpoena. They didn't do that here. They're saying, oh, yeah, well, there's a loophole, and so we didn't have to. We can, we can get this to come raid their computers. And once this evidence comes out, you guys will see that we, the police, are vindicated in executing this warrant. Now, the lawyer for the newspaper, which is called the Marion County Record, that's the name of the newspaper, the lawyer has said... You guys are not allowed to search any of that stuff. He's trying to put a halt on the police actually searching this stuff until they get uh, more word from a judge. But as far as I know, the police are searching this stuff already. It doesn't say anywhere in here that they've stopped searching. The story itself is convoluted because it involves a local restaurant owner. This local restaurant owner kicking a journalist out of a, a get-together for some local politician. And... I don't know how that is connected, and there, I don't know that we're supposed to know yet how that is connected exactly to this raid, but we know that someone at the newspaper started getting information about this restaurant owner, that allegedly she did not have a driver's license, she was not supposed to be driving, and she had been driving without a driver's license for a while, and she was trying to get a liquor license for her restaurant, which she, they were saying, shouldn't be getting this liquor license because she'd been breaking the law. Okay. The newspaper says, okay, they look this person up, and they decide not to run the story because they said it sounded like they were being set up a little bit. And they later found out that this source who was giving them this information was connected to this woman, the restaurant owner, her uh, husband, ex-husband. They're going through a bitter divorce. So they're like, this, this has something to do with her ex-husband. They're giving us this information. We're not even going to run the story. Right. But then it is alleged that the restaurant owner is like, hey, they, got, they accessed information about me from the DMV that they should not have been accessing. There you go. That's apparently where the raid comes in, and they try and see, I guess, if they were illegally accessing information that they weren't supposed to be accessing about this restaurant owner. The important thing here, though, is that they never even ran the story because they said the whole thing felt like a setup, and once they realized she was, uh, the source was connected to the ex-husband, they weren't interested. They're letting this Gestapo-like tactics, this Stalinist Russia-type tactics. This is what they do in the third world. Eric Meyer, the paper's co-owner and publisher, says his 98-year-old mother, Joan, the paper's other co-owner, collapsed and died just one day after the raid. She became so upset about this that she wouldn't eat that day. Unbelievable. She wouldn't sleep that night. At issue, Meyer says, is a tip one of his reporters received about a local business owner, Carrie Newell, accused of driving without a license. They did not publish the story. Newell has accused the paper of invading her privacy and illegally accessing information about her after she threw Meyer and a reporter out of a political event. This is an intimidation tactic. The Marion police chief defending the raid, writing in a statement, the judicial system that is being questioned will be vindicated. Okay, so the KBI, the Kansas Bureau of Investigation, is now been tasked with being the lead investigating department or whatever in this case. There's been newspapers from around the country that have condemned this raid and they have sent letters and said this should never happen this is against the law in the united states we cannot keep attacking the free press like this so look i don't know until i saw the story on saturday night late saturday night when my brother sent it to me i i didn't know exactly what the rules were protecting journalists i read a thing in the uh, paper in usa today about what exactly does protect them from things like this and it does seem sort of vague but it, it what i i got the impression at least that there's a precedent that says you don't do that you don't go execute it not only are there some legal protections but 
also just people haven't done it. If they want to go after journalists, they'll go get a subpoena and then try and get that information to say, hey, this right. person has been doing something illegal that they shouldn't have been doing, rather than just storming a small newspaper office, taking computers home, and then going like to the owner's houses, right? right? And raiding their stuff and going through their computers as well. I know that the attorney they said is based in Kansas City somewhere, the attorney for the newspaper. So they said there'll be more about this. The police, I guess, are going to release more information. The restaurant owner, who's at the center of this whole thing, she's been getting bad reviews now for restaurants. She did end up getting that liquor license, by the way. Okay. And she says that she's been getting hate now and that there's been people writing fake bad reviews for her businesses. And she's like, look, this is ridiculous. I'm just a small business owner. I can't, I don't have the authority or the ability to get the police Why to the police raid they, an is office. Is there a reason? Because we, it would seem that they're saying that they, the, the newspaper, journalists at this newspaper, illegally got information about that business owner. When they looked up, they tried to look up her driving record, it sounds like, to see if this tipster was accurate in saying she doesn't have a driver's license, she shouldn't be driving, she's been violating, she's been breaking the law by driving, and she's trying to get a liquor license, she shouldn't be getting a liquor license when she can't even follow the law. Right, That's okay. what this tipster had been telling them. So they had this information from a tipster, and apparently they went to the DMV's website to try and look her up to see if they could find out anything about her driving record, which I guess maybe they, I don't know exactly what they found, but whatever they found, they decided we're not going to print it anyway because this whole thing seems like a setup, and we now know that this tipster who gave us the information about the driver's license is connected. This is about a bitter divorce, and it's connected to her husband in some way, okay. her ex-husband. So at, at issue, I think, is them going to look up her driving record to see whether or not she should be driving, which is weird because where I live in Missouri, everything is public. Every single time you've been arrested, charged, it's all there. And there's a couple states that do that, but there would be no... There, if someone called uh, and said, hey, I got a tip about uh, Slimpass, his license was revoked, or you know, he's been charged right. with this or whatever, they would not have to illegally access anyone. They could just go to CaseNet and look it up, and boom, it's all right, right there. Everything you've ever done is right there for everyone to see. I need to pause this real quick. Yeah. Now, that's a bitter divorce, too. Yeah, right. The newspaper's looking into whether or not you've got a driver's license. You've been driving on a suspended license. Okay. People get so petty, man. I know. And then the part that I don't even understand, so I didn't even mention because it just adds confusion to it, is that another councilwoman named Ruth something, her house was raided too. It was raided last week. I'm not sure why. None of the okay, stories we'll seem pick to it know up why. here. Mm -hmm. Fun to see. I need to pause this real quick. Yeah. Sorry, one more second. Ready? So we'll see what happens, but I obviously right. don't love the idea of police raiding newspaper offices and taking no. their hard drives. Seems odd. I don't even know really, still, I know you explained it to me, I just don't understand why the police are involved. I don't either. Like why, there's something more to that, because why would they even care? Well, then that's what they're saying, you know, they're alluding to at least, once all of the information comes out, you'll see that we're vindicated. Okay, well then we do need some more information, because right, right now it sounds petty. It sounds petty because it apparently involves a divorce. Right. And it sounds petty because it allegedly involves someone getting kicked out of a campaign event, a political event. I mean, the whole thing sounds, it's confusing. And like I said, when the, the story says this is a confusing story and it leads with that, you know, okay, this is, this is going to be tough to try and explain on the air. But if you just search um, Marion no, uh, no, no. paper. So Friday's raid, raid was conducted on the basis of a search warrant. The search warrant posted online by the Kansas Reflector indicates police were investigating identity theft and unlawful acts concerning computers. Yeah, so the identity theft would be if I go onto the DMV's website and I put in my name, which in this instance they're alleging that they put in this business owner's name, and then her driver's license number, then you're pretending to be her to look up your Is records. That true? I don't know. But that's what like they're if saying. If you do that, are you always pretending to be? You, I mean, I don't know. If you're, I guess it depends on what the website looks like. If it says, what's your name? And then you say, this is my name. And it says, what is your driver's license number? Then maybe I would, you know, lots of things fall under wire fraud, I guess. But it certainly doesn't seem like something that they would 
circumvent the protections for journalists and go straight to raiding a place and taking all their computers. It seems like there's got to be more to it than that. If they were really that upset about identity theft for trying to go to the DMV's website, you'd think they would go through the proper process where they get the subpoena, right. uh, which according to everything I've read is how it's supposed to be. So, I mean, the Washington Post, there's every national outlet pretty much has been covering the story because journalists, it would seem, are universally upset about this. And it does seem a little... Well, like the guy said, right. a little third world, a little Gestapo-ish. Uh, Demar Hamlin, remember him? How, yes, of course. Heart failure on the field. Everybody became a fan of Demar Hamlin that night. I feel he was back this weekend, first time in the uniform, playing the game again. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy. Pretty amazing, and right? Two hundred. I think they say how many days ago. This morning, Demar Hamlin's triumphant return to the field. It'll be a long road, long journey, as far as the goals I got for myself in this game. But today was definitely a, a step in the right direction. The Buffalo Bills star safety played in his first football game since suffering a shocking cardiac arrest on the field seven months ago. Well, this is the last thing you want to see. So, I mean, pretty impressive, and everyone's rooting for him, I think. I mean, I'm not rooting for the Bills in general. Right. But it is pretty awesome that he's back. I was thinking this morning when they were doing that story, if that happened to me, would I be scared to put on the uniform again and go out there? I know it's a one in a million thing. Maybe one in a Probably billion. Being but I think I'd hesitant, be nervous. Right? Yeah, I think I'd be nervous. Like, man, I, even if the doctor said, no, your likelihood of it happening again is no mm. higher than anyone else's. And I'm like, well, what happened to me? Are you sure? Because, yeah, it happened right. to me. Well, but it's just you got to get hit right at the right time. We mm. think, like, do you know? Right. Are you sure that I'm not, like, predisposed to this happening when I get hit? I, I, and also, now that I'm out there on the field, are you being more careful? So you decide, I'm going to go out there. Right. You're like, whoa, watch it, buddy. Right. You almost hit me. That could stop your heart. I think I'd have... PTSD from it and probably, probably right? retire from the game, but that's all the more reason to respect this guy. Yeah, of course. Right? I mean, he's getting up, yep. doing it again. Do you guys remember the crazy plane lady who said she saw a shapeshifter or whatever she saw on an American oh, Airlines yeah. flight and she got kicked off? This lady. You, I'm getting the f off, and there's a reason why I'm getting off, and everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. But I am telling you right yeah. now that. <laughs> Back there is not real, and you can sit on this plane and you can die with them or not. Yep. I'm not going to. She's convincing me. It. If I was on the plane with her, I would have been I like, get I'm off getting too. off. I saw that movie. I'm getting off the plane. Final destination? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting off like, the plane. you know what? I'll catch the next me one. Me too. I'll just do standby. My me, me neither. And like, well, she's not leaving. I'm like, yeah, me too. It. Right. Unless you're getting a shapeshifter off too. Exactly. Um, and I'm out. Yeah. You, yeah. Maybe if you get him off, the guy who's not real. Right. But even then, I'm like, nah. Uh, no. It feels I'll like just this wait. plane ride is... Yeah. Yeah, we can go on to the next one. I'll just wait. Well, she posted a video on social media and apologized to everyone for her behavior. She doesn't mm. say what happened. I watched thinking she's going to say, I'd been drinking or I had a bad reaction to some medications that I took, but instead she just apologized. Hi, everyone. It's me, Tiffany Gomez, probably better known as the crazy plane lady, <laughs> which is completely warranted. First and foremost, I want to take full accountability for my actions. They were completely unacceptable. Distressed or not, I should have been, I should have been in control of my emotions and that was not the case. My use of profanity was completely well, unnecessary. I'm not and worried about the cussing. I apologize cussing. to everyone on that plane, especially those that had children aboard. We all have our bad moments some far worse than others. Hey, we all have our bad moments. I'm with you. You could have left it at that. You didn't need to say some far worse than others. Yours got you a little 15 minutes of fame, or in infamy at least. And I don't know, maybe maybe she likes that. Maybe that's why she's putting out clips and apologizing, saying, hey, it's, it's Tiffany. Like, you know, this is her name and apologizing, but... She's apologized. Just for future reference, so you never have to apologize for telling me that there's a shapeshifter on an airplane. No, I mean, if there never. is one, just tell me. We should know. Like, I if you want know, to then know. we should know. Yes. Hey, Jen, I didn't get a chance to go back and read all your stuff, but I did look this up. Do you know what it takes to be an NFL agent? The NFL refundable application fee of 2500 bucks. You have to have a master's or law degree from an accredited college university oh, or or seven years of sufficient negotiating experience. So I probably have that mm -hmm. literally with all the contracts that we've done, right? Mm -hmm. That's just seven years of negotiating experience. So 
You can do it with the degree or experience. You don't need it. Uh, you have to give them authorization to perform a background check. You have to go to a mandatory attendance two-day virtual seminar. Uh, successful completion of multiple choice uh, examination. It's like our university. And uh, you have to have a valid email address. A valid email address. So there you go. That, those are things that you need to do. That's crazy. Plain lady, 38-year-old Tiffany Gomez, right? I wouldn't have thought that was her. Now, would you... Date her. Yes. Knowing that she sees yes. shapeshifters yes. and all I that. I think yeah. that's nice that Me she too. can Obviously. see them. It's nice to know if you're at a restaurant and there's a shapeshifter. We can get out of here. Hey, goodbye. Mm -hmm. Yo. Yo. Did you have fun today? I had fun today. Good. More fun than getting my butthole licked. Well. You? Well, I had fun. I had fun. You know, it was one of those days where I, Monday I was tired, but as soon as Snowcone played me the audio of, what's her name, Taryn something? Taryn Manning? Yeah. That, she was uh, something. That, that perked me up. Uh, I've she been was in a better so, I'd like to since. hear that again. Absolutely. Is it possible? It's definitely possible. I've got it right here, and I don't plan on ever deleting it. Let's see. Where should I pick up? Maybe somewhere around in here? In a row. Or even maybe there's a night in between. I was licking his butt. <laughs> nope. Because he liked it. And <laughs> I didn't mind doing it. Yeah. Does, that, does that bother? Does, is that weird? No. no. And that is what demons do. So That's what demons I, do? We drove all the way down to Newport Beach today so I could buy him a boat. That's nice of you. <laughs> I love it mm -hmm. when she giggles, man. She's so great. Mm -hmm. She's going to buy him a boat. What that's more what do you demon, want? I don't know if you know that or not, but that's what demons do. Yeah. They lick butts, and that's what you two do. Well, I don't so know if she's that other lady that can see That other her. lady can see shapeshifters. I see demons. Two of them right here. That's me. Butt licking demons. Hell yeah. It's a good day. Disgusting. You butt licking demons. Put it on my tombstone. <laughs> it's a good day. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what Snow was her name? Ta Taryn, right? Taryn Manning? Yeah. Good show. Stay positive, kids. Butt licking demons. Video captures house exploding in Pennsylvania, killing five people, including father and son, who were walking by. People. Oh my God. Plum, Pennsylvania. How does your house blow up like that when you're inside? If it's gas, you would smell it, right? Oh, 38-year-old dad and his 12-year-old son. What happened? This house just blew up mm. in the suburbs. I mean, it blew up. It looks like a bomb in a movie. The investigation into the cause could take months, if not years.
Is no coming to tonight body cam? I'm not sure. Is that a new show? It's not new. Good night, Twitch. Good night, Twitch. See you guys tomorrow.